So as we get new users moving into Premiere Pro from the world of Final Cut and Media Composer, we constantly have them finding parts of Premiere Pro and asking, what is that for? Like the reference monitor. Uh, I created this episode because someone that I heard th uh, through someone else, they said, the reference monitor, oh, that's what you use for a secondary display. Oh, it's not. Uh, let me just clear that up first. If you want to have what you're looking at in your program or your source monitor or even in the uh, media browser going out to a second display, that's called Mercury Transmit, and I'll show you where it is. So let's go to the Edit menu, Preferences, Playback, and if I had a second display or an AJA, Blackmagic, or Matrox card, they would show up inside there. I select them, and I'm out. And that's, that includes just a, a DVI monitor, a second DVI monitor. Then whenever you're clicking on goes out, that's not what the reference monitor is for. Let's go find out what it's really for. It's hiding in here in the window menu, and if we go down to our reference monitor and turn this on, it sure looks like it's a secondary display because it's playing everything that's in my program monitor, but it's not. It is uh, right now ganged to that monitor, and just like anything else in Premiere Pro, I can grab this little tab. I don't really want to work uh, in this uh, at this time in my source monitor, so I'm going to hide my source monitor by dragging this into the drop zone when it's directly in the middle, let go. So what would I use this for? Well. Right now it's ganged to the uh, same location in the timeline, so there isn't much use in looking at this uh, when it's ganged looking at composite video. So if I turn this button off, gang, so it's not, I can now drag this to a different area and I could use this to balance. So on the left hand side, I noticed that this particular shot is incredibly saturated and over here it is desaturated. So you can use this for comparing the beginning to the end of whatever shot you want. And when I'm clicking and moving over here, that's playing, we have play controls, of course, in the program monitor. We don't have play controls or edit controls in here, but we can step frame to frame or go to the next edit point. Same as hitting the up and down arrow uh, on the keyboard. So that's really what that's for. But the better use for this and the more useful use for this is the little flyout menu in here. And you'll notice this also um, in the program monitor. All of these things are scopes down here. But if you want the scopes on a second display, then we can go down here and choose scopes. So now when I push play, I've got my scopes showing over there and everything is, oh, I'm not ganged to it. So I need to go back and gang the monitors together. Now I can hit play and you'll see the scopes moving, okay? I can also turn this to different scopes. So right now in a small display like this, um, I tend to not want the vector scope when I'm doing color work uh, unless I'm you know, in broadcast work and I'm, I'm working on flesh tones and things like that. So maybe I just want the RGB parade by itself. And when I'm working this way, I could be using that simply. Um, I might want to use the RGB parade with these other scopes in here. So it's just a little bit easier to view. And actually, we have a workspace that uses the reference monitor and the scopes already made for you. The only issue with this is it does not change this display, the reference monitor display, to a scope. It actually leaves it on composite video. So it could be easy to, um, to miss that one. So just come down in here and turn on a scope and make sure it's ganged and now I've got a color correction interface. The reason this is important is because if I'm adding my color correction uh, inside here, so if I go to my effects and type my, if I could spell three-way, color corrector, and drop it on this clip. I've got my color correction controls in here. I've got my scopes over here and my main program display inside here. That's what the reference monitor for. Oh, that's what you use it for. So you might not use it. It might be something that you just leave tucked away, but anytime you need to compare two separate parts of the timeline, or you need to call up the scopes and have them ganged inside there, you now know how to do that with the reference monitor.